tell us about uh, the history of, of uh, 57 Chevy, how it started, how did, how did you get involved? Yeah. I mean, um, you know, being a, being a member of Culture Clash, you know, the three of us, Richard and Herbert and myself, we, we are known out in the world because of Culture Clash. So it's great that we have that exposure with not only audiences, but with our peers. So Chris Franco, who's an award-winning, Emmy-winning um, writer, he's a host, he's an actor. He was, uh, at one point, he was Latin's Anonymous. And at one point, he performed with Latin's Anonymous at San Diego Rep, even. Anyway, yeah, the, so. guy's, the guy has had this great idea uh, to uh, do this play about his life and his father, father and son story. But the poor guy had, um, he contracted something in his throat. Uh, he had to get radiation. He's okay, but he can't perform. He can't sing. He can't go on stage. So he had this piece. And so he called me thinking, hey, maybe Rick Salinas can do this, you know. And so we workshopped it a lot. It took us like a year to get it to where it is now. And when I say workshopped is, you know, I, I added humor to it, punchlines. I kind of made it my own, but it was not my story. It was written by Chris Franco. And what attracted me to the story is that it was a positive, positive image, positive story of a Mexican a Mexican, a, a Mexicano, not even Chicano. And in a nutshell, the story is about this father who buys a brand new 57 Chevy in 1957. He drives down to Mexico City to pick up his wife, his three daughters, or two, daughter, uh, two daughters then, and his son, packs them in the 57 Chevy, and he moves to the United States, and he lands in South Central Los Angeles, which at the time was predominantly African-American, but there was also Latinos there. It was uh, pretty multicultural. So he goes with his family from Mexico City to South Central, and that's what you would call the first migration. Well, the second migration is when he goes from South Central and he moves to the San Fernando Valley, which he called the same Fernando Valley. And this is the story of, they were the very first Mexican family in the neighborhood, first Mexican family at their school, First Mexican family at this parish. They were the first Mexican family in San Fernando, in this neighborhood, right? And so he felt like he was the first alien from outer space being this Mexican kid in this, like, you know, suburban, uh, you know, place. So right. an easy way to describe it is kind of like a Latino wonder years. Yes. It yes. starts with him being very four years old to six years old and to 10. And so the most you hear about it is his voice is a 10 year old. So it's very much like, like the wonder, uh, years. The wonder years. Wonder years. And, yeah. and they even did another that. one with, um, with um, what was the one with the African American kid that, that uh, oh, yeah, everyone yeah. hates. Um, yeah, 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 the, uh, yeah. The, everyone the, hates Chris. Chris, yeah. Chris Rock did the voice Chris over. Rock, yeah. Yeah, very similar to that, that era, yeah. you know. The seven you know, era. you don't see, yeah, we don't see those stories on TV, you know, Latino stories of young kids. And if they're young, they're probably victims, right? They're immigrants, they're on the train, you know, they're behind oh my gosh. or something. So yeah. That, that, that's what I love about this play. It, it doesn't it doesn't deal with victimhood at all. At all, it, which is something you all. rarely it, see. It shows, it shows Latinos that I know, that you know, that our neighbors, our friends, that have been here a while, we're American as apple pie, mm -hmm. and we just happen to be Latino, and you know, and you know, there's no victimhood about us. We're just no. hardworking people. Absolutely, Herb, and that's when I, when I said that it was probably one of my most political plays I did. Yet it has no politics. It's not political, 